Well, that my talk about migrating the Federine Rally installer to Wayland. So, yeah, I'll talk basically why we need to do that, why an installer needs to care about the graphics at all, like why we need to handle that, why it's not handled by just doing distribution we are based on, stuff like that. Um, I'll talk about what we are doing right now, how it works in, in the current state, what we are going to switch to. Um, I'll talk how we are going to handle this on, on rail, uh, how we plan to handle this in Fedora as well. Yeah, some gotchas we hit all, over the time we worked on this. And yeah, I hope it's, it's a bit specific in, in places to the installer use case. But overall, this could be relevant to anyone who might be looking into migrating to Wayland or has migrated into Wayland possibly in the past because the landscape is still a bit changing around these like new graphical stacks. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, so uh, the installer, it's basically an installation image that you boot into. Somehow there are many ways how you can do it. And yeah, it needs to have some interface. Uh, what I will be talking about is uh, the graphical interface, uh, which can be reached either directly on the machine via monitor, let's say, or something like that, or you can reach it also uh, remotely. Uh, we have other ways how we can drive the installer, including fully automated modes or a text mode, but I won't really be touching that today. Uh, yes, yeah, so also we have uh, multiple images, and today I'm talking mainly about the so-called boot ISO. It's also called uh, a net inst image. It's uh, basically a minimal Linux distribution that is uh, made so as to enable just an ins installation of an operating system from various sources. Uh, and the aim is to make it as small as possible because it directly drives hardware requirements during the installation. The bigger it is, the bigger issues people might have with it. And might, it might limit their hardware or VM sizing choices uh, so there are other images I will touch about uh, which are related to mainly Fedora, which are the so-called live images. Um, it works a bit differently there. So the boot ISO, it can have this uh, text mode and also a graphical mode. Uh, so far we have been using the X server under, under the graphical stack with the uh, uh, window manager and uh, GTK3 application on top. Uh, during the migration, we are basically changing this uh, uh, bottom layer. We are not really changing the application in any meaningful way. Uh, and we are actually still keeping the GNOME Kios. We are just going to use it in a different mode. Uh, and we are actually running multiple applications. It's, uh, the install is a single um, full-screen GTK3 application, but uh, we need to launch also the network connection editor, which is a separate GUI application. We need to make sure it's up over the installer. And there is also the keyboard layout preview. Uh, also another thing other than just displaying the pixels on the screen is uh, input. That is fortunately or unfortunately also related to the, to the display system for various reasons. And so far has been pretty much uh, uh, baked into the XORG experience in our case. So uh, this was also something we needed to, to work on to keep working. Because if we just switched to Wayland from XORG, it will just not work because uh, the library we are using, while working perfectly fine for us so far, is XORG only. It doesn't really speak Wayland. Mm. Uh, we are already actually using uh, XWayland in some cases on the live images on Fedora. But the problem is that uh, if you use that, like it will work. It will work on a Wayland mm, compositor underneath, but it won't uh, switch, switch keyboard layouts. It will switch them kind of in this like special X-Wayland session. So yeah, we had, we had to do something about this. Uh, and like the last thing, uh, my intro topic is uh, remote access. Mm, there are other ways how you can reach the installer during the installation, but the main way people are using is uh, basically remote desktop. So far, we have been using the VNC protocol, which is pretty simple. Uh, you can somehow protect it a bit by password, which is limited in length. It doesn't have any encryption, but it works. People are used to it. Uh, we are using the Tiger VNC implementation, which is 
uh, tightly coupled again with XOR, kind of like the Linux clavier we used for input. And uh, that's also one peculiarity, and that's the direct connection mode uh, supported by VNC, where you can basically set up your client somewhere and tell the installer to connect to it. Um, it can be useful in some scenarios because you don't need to actively connect to the machines under installation. And apparently there are some firewalling uh, uh, layouts that use this as well. I'll touch, touch on it later. Um, also one, one note to uh, say about remote access. Uh, there are machines where people are used to using the graphical interface, which don't really have uh, any local display hardware. This is quite often the S390s, these modern mainframes, let's say, and also some PowerPC machines. Uh, the uh, way people are installing these quite often is remote desktop, so this needs to continue working. So this is the status quo. Uh, Let's talk about the live images right now. Uh, this is actually the main deliverable, the main deliverable on Fedora. Like if you go to the Fedora web pages, you will be directed into live media, the Fedora media writer, or the main download page, and the main deliverable will be the Fedora live image. So let's talk about it quickly. In this case, uh, if you boot, if you put it into media, if you boot it. Uh, the main use case is to kind of test Fedora and also to install it. And in this case, uh, you are running a desktop environment. It's a bit more complicated, but let's, let's talk about this, this use case. And Anaconda is just a normal application there. Already the image is using Wayland, Wayland by default. So, so far we have been running as a, a X application, so via X Wayland. And one of the issues we had is uh, keyboard switching, because as I've mentioned, LibX Clavier only does, does X, and so it's, if it's changing anything, it's doing it in the box of the mm, X Wayland. It's not a container, but environment, let's say, and it's not in affecting the rest of the system. So that was one of the issues uh, we have, we've, had, we've had for a while already. Um, it's documented, users can use the environment to switch keyboards, but it's, it's tricky. Like, I've recently installed a machine, I forgot to do it, and then like had the wrong keyboard layout for the Lux password, so this is really something we should fix. Um, also about uh, remote access on the live image, it's not really a thing, at least it's not something we can really uh, control, uh, but the environment itself could have remote access. I think if you use the Fedora image, it will have the, the normal GNOME remote desktop support, so you could set, up, set it up to have remote access, but it doesn't make much sense in this case, I think. Mm. Also, a note about the availability. So, uh, live images are often used in Fedora, uh, but RHEL doesn't have any official live images. It's not like the official artifact you can get as a RHEL customer. You will just get uh, the boot ISO, that's the main deliverable there. So uh, let's talk a bit about uh, the Xorg, the X server, uh, and it being dropped from RHEL. It has been, this has been announced uh, uh, in November last year, officially on uh, some RHEL blog. Uh, and this is affecting us as well, because uh, the installation images are built from the packages of the given distribution, in this case from, from RHEL, from RHEL 10 packages. Uh, so if uh, XORG is to be dropped, no one uh, can depend on it. So we need to drop the dependency as well, and we need to be able to build uh, boot ISO from mm, the available packages, which will no longer contain XORG in the near future, as planned. So we had to do something about this. Uh, we worked on it the last six months, basically, on and off, and uh, we came up with something. So. Uh, the problem was the display system itself and then the uh, lib libraries we are using which depend on XORG as well. So keyboard support and remote desktop. So VNC, Tiger VNC and Lipix Clavier. Uh, we also, like one, one, one of the ways we, we looked into, uh, one of the things we looked into as an option possibly was uh, XValeant. There are actually more ways than how you can use it. Uh, the normal way is uh, I think it's separate applications per, like every X application is kind of separate environment. 
if you run it on a valent compositor. But we looked into also uh, another way where you basically have a X box. You have a box where multiple X applications are running. It will even have its own window manager. I think the use case for this, for this is if you have a valent system and you want to run some X uh, compositor of your choice or X, uh, window manager of your choice. Possibly also for legacy support if you have a full uh, appliance or something that using, it's using multiple applications that all need X or depend on the window manager as well. So we looked into that as well. Uh, that would even actually uh, handle the keyboards because it will set the keyboards for this, this box and if you make the box uh, full screen, people might not actually notice it. But in the end, it's, it was not robust enough for our use case. It was far too complex because you would have Wayland on top of that, you would have the, uh, the rootful uh, XWayland and in that you would have an X window manager and in that you would have Anaconda and the Anaconda might even start the network connection editor and it would be a, like, a lot of layers and yeah, we decided that let's, let's try to make it native Wayland ideally and we were successful in that, I'm foreshadowing a bit. So it is, this was not an option for us but it's definitely an option for someone who is running some legacy X applications with fully tuned window manager and everything. This is a way how you can run them in a valent system if you need to. So next I will talk about how we actually set it up, how we did it and yeah, we managed to do it. So uh, in the end we managed to make Anaconda run as a native valent application. So the stack looks like uh, much, much simpler than what I described with the possible X-Valent solution. So that is a Valent compositor running directly on the hardware. It's kind of like if, what you would have if you had normal Fedora workstation. Uh, we are using Valent compositor. It is slightly different. It's using the Matter library as Gnome Shell would do on Fedora workstation. Uh, but we are using the GNOME Kios, which is a cut down, simplified version of it. It's still lip, uh, lip matter underneath, but yeah, it's doing the uh, mm, minimal necessary amount and it's usually used for some infotainment systems or uh, I think the GNOME uh, initial setup is using this if you start a federal workstation for the, for the first time uh, for the limited environment. So this is what we are using. We're actually using it already as a window, X window manager uh, on Fedora and all on RHEL until, RHEL 10 until recently. But now we are using it as a valent compositor. It can do both. I think ROM shell is the same basically, but the implementation is different. Um, for the keyboard issue, we dropped LibX Clavier because we had to. The uh, X org dependencies, that, that was the problem. Um, and Right now we are using a Dbus API that has been added to Gnome Kios for keyboard switching. It's a specific thing used by, used by Gnome Kios. Mm. But in the future we'll very, very likely switch to OKLD. That was not really an option when we started on it, but thankfully since then it's proliferated quite a bit. So the current solution that we deployed very recently already to our Relton branch is uh, based on the GNOME Kios Dbus API, but we plan to migrate to, to LocalD, which is proliferating over um, many Fedora editions by this point. And yeah, that's the future most likely. It has not really been a thing a year ago already, but it looks like the violent migration overall is picking up speed, so it could be related. Uh, as for the remote desktop API, uh, yeah, it's not yet on this slide, let's see. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, what about the remote desktop? So, we looked at the, at the options. Um, for example, we looked even on different compositors. Uh, and it looks like if you used Western instead of what we are using, so Gnome Kios, uh, libmotor based compositor, that can do directly VNC, maybe RDP. Uh, it's not possible to do that directly from GNOME Kiosk, at least right now. So what we choose in the end is uh, the GNOME Remote Desktop tooling. 
And uh, this is basically forwarding images or the, the screen content from the GNOME Kiosk session running in a headless mode via pipe wire to the GNOME remote desktop, which is using uh, free RDP to provide access to this over uh, the uh, remote desktop protocol, so RDP. Uh, technically, GNOME remote desktop has some support also for VNC, but as far as I can tell, it's more or less uh, backwards compatibility. It's not even exposed uh, in Fedora workstation in the graphical user interface. You, you need to enable it via command line. And it looks like the future or the, the future direction for GNOME Remote Desktop seems to be in the RDP direction. So we decided to do that as well. So the current solution as implemented is a switch from VNC to RDP. The main difference is being that uh, it's encrypted for now. Of course, you need to make sure that you are actually connecting to what you think you are connecting because the certificates are self-signed by default. So ideally, you should check that they actually match before between the machine under installation and your client software. But it should be overall an improvement in security. The password can have more than eight characters or something crazy like that. VNC will trunk your password silently. Like if you use like 16 characters, it will cut them, I think, to eight. And it will ignore everything else. Like that's the specification for, I don't know why, I don't want to know why. Uh, this is encrypted. It has username, password, uh, stuff like that. Mm. And overall, let's say my feeling from it is, it seems to be much more robust. So time will tell if it's really like that. Uh, Time will tell like how uh, available are the clients for it. But so far, it seems to be working fine for us. Uh, one difference is uh, there is no connect mode. As far as, as we can tell, uh, you just need to always connect to the machine under installation from an external source if you want to monitor it. This was one of the things asked uh, in feedback on Fedora, but I'll, I'll get to that. Also, one change we did for now is uh, we don't have a uh, kickstart command for remote desktop now. We used to have uh, the VNC command in kickstart and the inst.vnc commands to enable this from boot options. So far, we have just the inst rdp family of boot options. And we will see, like, uh, if there is demand, if there is good use cases, we can add a new kickstart command. But for now, we are trying to, to keep it simple. Yeah, if you have any use cases for a kickstart command, yes, that's, that's, let us know. We can definitely look into it. Uh, so, actually, with the previous things, the I was thinking about images for the talk, and I was thinking about like screenshots, how it looks like in X and on Wayland, but they would be the same. So, that was kind of the thing. Like you can you should not notice the change in the graphics output. But this is noticeable because like, the, the, the option will change and you will need to use a username, uh, take care of the certificates, but overall it should be a, a positive change, hopefully. Uh, also, I wanted to speak about, a bit about how this worked out. Uh, it's not just like someone from us, from the Federal Installer team, like sitting down and writing it down, that, that would not be really possible. It's, many components that are very complex. The installation environment itself is uh, specific because it's uh, so cut down and optimized for the one use case, which is system installation. So this ended up to be uh, quite an interesting uh, cross-team effort between, and I just can't, hello, uh, I just can't uh, like name everyone, but it was us, the installer team, it was the desktop team, it was the GPU team, and together we, we made it work somehow. So thanks a lot to everyone, anyone involved. And yeah, it has worked out, so perfect. Thanks a lot. Uh, yes, so about some issues. Uh, yeah, there is actually an issue that is still being looked into, that you can hit a race condition where GNOME Kiosk talking via Pipewire to GNOME Remote Desktop might send weird uh, packets uh, of information and uh, crash. So, but if you are not very, very quick, you won't hit it, and we will fix it eventually. So 
That's one thing, and uh, the most recent one is and the anonymous issues on S390 with Wayland, so it was also quite interesting. So S390 is, is big NDN, everything else basically is little NDN, and Wayland doesn't like that. So yeah, it's, that's being looked into. Uh, and uh, it was quite a challenge to get the modern graphics text work in our minimal environment. Like it requires PAM, it requires various environment variables, so it needs a home folder set up and everything like that, crazy stuff. But yeah, that, that was interesting. We have a script that makes the, our environment normal for it, so it works in the end. Uh, very quickly about, about Fedora, due to the timelines involved, we kind of had to do this uh, on rail first. Now we would like to do it also in Fedora as, as soon as possible because uh, mm, we want to keep our sanity. The, the patch is pretty big. And the longer we will have it like rotting in some branch in uh, our code repository, yeah, that won't be good for anyone. So uh, while we kind of deployed it for the, to the rail branch very, very, very recently, we are also looking into uh, re putting it into Fedora as soon as possible. There is a change proposal proposed. There is some discussions ongoing. In, in general, we want to have this the same. We, we think the architecture is fine, and so the main change would be the, the local D support. We would like to have that as the main and only way how you set up keyboards, and we think it should be doable. Like there might be some uh, minor spins that might need to implement it yet, and so I think GNOME, GNOME Shell needs to uh, have full support for it first. But that's again work in progress or should be, should be doable. At least we notified everyone involved about this. And yeah, it's currently being discussed on the Fedora mailing list, on the Fedora discourse, and we'll see how it goes. But so far, I would say the feedback has been positive. But we will see how it looks like, if we will find some blockers, if it goes into F41 or possibly later, or in a slightly different form. But that, that's our goal. Mm. Uh, yeah, one, one difference from RHEL is uh, mainly the live images, and it's unlikely all live images will drop uh, XORG anytime soon, so we need to still keep working there. But as long as the, as long as the local D support is added, it should, it should work. Uh, and yeah, the VNC RDP switch, again, that, that will be the main, most visible thing. Yeah, as long as it actually works on people's hardware, that would be not very visible, but that would be the problem. Uh, some open questions. Uh, yeah, basically, I think I, I've covered that. Yeah, so, so one, one thing that was raised quite, quite interesting is like we don't really have uh, fallback support right now, and we would like to avoid adding that. It would increase the complexity quite a bit if we added valence support while keeping all the X code in place. Uh, there was an interesting argument that like Fedora defaults to Wayland quite often, but it has some fallback mechanisms. So yeah, we will need to do some more testing. And yeah, again, the uh, lack of connect support and the uh, differences in RDB, we will see how it goes. Uh, and yeah, some lessons learned from this. Uh, so far, the decision and uh, the successful implementation of native Wayland support has been Positive, as far as you can tell. Mm. Also, the modern graphical stef stack is definitely more complex, but so far it seems to be more, more robust. So, from our experience after the switch, mm. and as I've said, uh, yeah, cross-team collaboration on this was very interesting and totally necessary. Uh, we provided help to people from the desktop team, from the GPU team. And they helped us debug very crazy issues we would never be able to solve ourselves, at least without like spending five years learning everything in the stack first. So thanks a lot yet again. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's all for the talk. So it's time for questions. Yeah, so the first question is about memory requirements. I think you mean uh, random access memory, so RAM. Yes, yes. That's a good... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the first one uh, with the RAM, 
Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I don't think we really, really tried, but we don't didn't notice any like major issues. Like the, the VMs, the test environments we are using, we didn't have to like bump the requirements in any way. Um, I would expect it to be roughly the same. Like we are not really dropping any many layers or anything like that. As for the related size uh, image size requirements, I think it might be even small, slightly smaller or almost the same because. Actually, uh, yeah, we are, we are. We actually have like everything in place already. Like uh, the GNOME Kiosk is already a valent compositor, and it's already there. So we are not really dropping that much. We are dropping the Tiger VNC, and we are dropping the uh, Lipix Xavier, but we are adding back the GNOME Remote Desktop and Free RDP. So yeah, so far we haven't noticed anything or any major problems. And yeah, we can go to the second question. Mm, so right now the question is so about authentication to PAM yeah. authentication. Uh, for the VNC we had just a password. For the RDP right now how it's implemented is uh, username and password. So that's a good a good point. Like yeah, if you want to definitely fill an issue, we can we can look into it. But for now, for the initial implementation, we just expect username and password. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so that's all. So thanks for attending, and that's it, I think.